Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ, and last week, Microsoft officially announced Windows 11, which wasn't much of a surprise considering a developer copy of Windows 11 leaked online the week before. And although the official public release of Windows 11 isn't planned until around the holidays for new PCs and early 2022 for DIY systems, you can upgrade your PC to an official version of Windows 11 directly from Microsoft today. And I'm gonna show you how to step by step. Let's do this. When I'm doing tedious work like hours of benchmarking, I like to catch up on my reading list and I'm able to do that with Audible Plus. Audible Plus offers access to thousands of best-selling audiobooks, Audible originals, and even podcasts. As an Audible Premium Plus member, this month I selected Star Wars Thrawn Ascendancy by Timothy Zahn as one of my two monthly free bonus titles to keep. For more information about Audible Plus or to get your free trial, click the link in the description below. Okay, before I go, first things first. I'm going to be showing you how to make changes to your system and install beta versions of your operating system. This is just a general guide as I can't tailor it to every specific system possible, so only follow this guide if you feel comfortable making these changes. Things can go wrong, so do it at your own risk. I'm not the lifeguard, I'm not on duty, I'm just pointing to the direction of the pool. I'm not responsible if you drown or brick your PC. Okay, let's move on. And if you've been anticipating and preparing to upgrade to Windows 11, and you've already made all the changes in your BIOS or UEFI and ran the Microsoft PC Health Checker, and it informed you that your system meets all system requirements, congratulations, you're ahead of the game and you can use the chapter markers to skip ahead. For the rest of you, we're gonna start in the BIOS or UEFI because 99.9% .9 of you will need to make some changes there. So first, I hope you're watching this video on your phone or other device because step one, restart your PC and start hitting that delete key or whichever key your system requires to enter the system UEFI menu. If your UEFI menu opened in simple mode, tap whichever key is necessary to enter advanced mode. For me, that's F7. We have three settings here that need to be checked and changed if necessary. First, in order to make the two required changes, you need to ensure that CSM or compatibility support module is disabled. This is usually found in the boot tab. Now, big disclaimer here, if CSM is enabled and in legacy mode, then do not disable it yet. In order to enable TPM and Secure Boot, which needs to be done to install Windows 11, your system needs to be in UEFI boot mode, not legacy. If it's in legacy, in order to switch or disable CSM, you may need to do a full Windows reinstall, ensuring your boot drive is formatted in a GPT partition, not an NBR partition. Now, this whole process is, well, a whole process. There is an MBR to GPT command you can use in an elevated terminal, but that has failed for me more times than it's actually worked. This is a whole video in itself, but basically, if your boot drive is in MBR format and legacy boot mode is enabled, you need to fix that before you can do the rest. There are some guides out there, so once you have your system in UEFI boot mode, we can move on to the most misunderstood setting. Enabling TPM. Now, almost no two UEFI menus look the same, so for an AMD motherboard like my X570, it can be found in the Advanced tab under AMD FTPM configuration. If you have a Security tab, it may also be found there. If you have an Intel motherboard, it's called PTT, or Platform Trust Technology, and can also be found in the Advanced or Security tab. For some boards, it's simply Disable or Enable, and you want to select Enable. If you have a TPM header on your motherboard, like in my case, you may have the choice for discrete or firmware TPM. Now, unless your motherboard does have a physical TPM module on it, and most motherboards do not, select firmware TPM because all AMD Ryzen motherboards since the first gen and all Intel Skylake and newer motherboards have TPM in the firmware. If you have an older platform, you may have to check and see if it does have a TPM header. 
in which case you may need to get a TPM module, or it may be time to consider upgrading if you want to run Windows 11. However, I wouldn't make that decision until the public release of the OS, just in case things change and BIOS updates come out. So once TPM is enabled, the next setting is to enable Secure Boot again. This may be in the Security tab or in the Boot tab, and it may be in Enable Disable. If so, select Enable, or it may be in OS selection, like in my case, and I'm selecting Windows UEFI for my Secure Boot option. With all our initial settings done, you can save and exit the UEFI menu. The next step is to determine if your hardware is up to specs to run Windows 11. If you were able to make those UEFI settings, then it should be, but to be sure, download the Windows PC Health Check tool and run it. All the links are in the description below, but Google is always a good option to ensure you're getting the latest stuff. Once it's installed, run the check and hopefully you get back the congratulations text. If not, it should tell you what specific hardware component is not compatible, whether it be your CPU or storage. Hopefully, you didn't get back a prompt about TPM or Secure Boot. If so, go back to the first step and see what you missed in the UEFI menu. If you're good to go, it's time to become a Windows Insider. This will require an official Microsoft account, so if you don't have one, go ahead and register for one. You can use an already established email address or phone number, or you can register for a new Outlook email. Now, make your way to the Windows Insider program site and just register for the program. This is a quick process. Next, we have to activate your new Insider status in Windows, so click Start, Settings, and the Update and Security. At the bottom left side of the menu, you should see Windows Insider Program. Click that. If you're like me and have all the diagnostic data disabled, you'll need to enable it. It's the price of being a beta tester and having early access to the Windows 11 builds. Now it's time to select your insider level and to get first crack at Windows 11 builds, select the dev channel. However, more disclaimers. In the dev channels, yes, you get the newest builds the soonest, but that also means the least stable and tested versions because you are the tester. So if you're not comfortable being able to troubleshoot issues that may come up, consider the beta channel. This will give you the versions the dev channel insiders have already tested and hopefully Microsoft has ironed out those reported bugs. In any case, confirm your channel selection which will require a restart. Once your PC restarts, simply go to Start, Settings, Updates and Security, and there's the Windows 11 Insider Preview. If it's not there, simply click Check for Updates, and then Download and Install. The process can take 30 minutes or more, depending on your system, But when it's done, just click Restart. Your system will go through the typical Windows update procedure. Be patient, this is a longer than typical update, but with a payoff because on the final restart, you have an official release of Windows 11 with all the new features. Congratulations. Again, this is a beta release of the OS and you are the beta tester. Don't just be a consumer, be a contributor. If you run into bugs or stability issue, send Microsoft those bug reports and hopefully by the end of the year, the general public will update to a perfectly stable new operating system. I mean, we can fantasize. As for me, I'll be doing some in-depth comparisons and benchmarks in the areas of productivity, content creation, and gaming, comparing Windows 11 to Windows 10, so be sure to subscribe for that. If this tutorial was helpful, be sure to hit that like, and I hope to see you in the next one. Until then, stay safe.